1. Candace's early jobs included commercials for Cabbage Patch Dolls and KFC, but her first IMDb credit was playing Megan White in a 1982 appearance on the hit drama Saint Elsewhere, and her character actually showed up four more times over several years. She also had early 80s parts on TJ Hooker, Punky Brewster, Growing Pains, starring her older brother, Kirk Cameron, and Who's the Boss? 2. She made her big screen debut in the 1987 John Hughes scripted teen romance Some Kind of Wonderful, in a little sister role, and played Sally Fields, daughter in the 1988 film Punchline, which also starred an up-and-coming Tom Hanks. But while Candace has starred in more than two dozen TV movies, those are the only major theatrical releases on her resume. She had a great time on the set of Punchline, though, she recalled in her 2014 book Balancing It All, and took away a lifelong lesson from Field after seeing the Oscar winner insist she was spent after shooting a crying scene multiple times and needed a break. It taught me that even the best have their limits and it's okay to say when you've reached yours, Candace wrote. 3. Having a brother in show business helped with name recognition, but Full House creator Jeff Franklin remembered Candace as more than holding her own at her audition for the ABC sitcom, which premiered in 1987. She was just so natural, he remembered to Variety in 2016. There was nothing forced or artificial about her. She was just completely a real kid, really cute and funny. She was kind of like an everyday kid that I thought young kids watching the show would really relate to. It didn't hurt that her last name was Cameron and she was Kirk Cameron's little sister. That was kind of a bonus, it wouldn't have mattered at all. Again, she just nailed the part. 4. Candace didn't remember it going quite so smoothly on her end. After her first audition for the role of DJ Tanner, which Andrea Barber also read for. Before being cast as neighbor Kimmy Gibbler, the casting director got on the phone immediately after and said, yeah, she was fine. She was okay. Well, bring her back for a callback, Candace recalled to Glamour.com in 2016. And she hung up the phone, and I started crying as she walked me back out to my mom. My mom said, why are you crying? And I said, because she said I was just okay and I was fine. The casting director insisted everything was fine, but I was just destroyed, the actress said. The child asked what she could do to be better than fine, and when they suggested she give them more energy, she did. I had two or three auditions after that for producers, Candace added, and that was it. 5. Necessarily savvy at a young age, Candace explained during a November 1990 appearance on an all-new Mickey Mouse Club guest day, in which a kid got to spent the day with one of their favorite stars, that she did know people were paying attention to her behavior because she was famous. She wasn't too afraid of making mistakes, the 14-year-old said, but you do have to be a little more cautious in what you do, because it is a different kind of world and you can kind of get messed up in some things. But I am not too worried about it. 6. Asked about losing the Kirk Cameron's little sister moniker, Candon said in 1990, now that I've been on the show for three years now, going on a fourth, I am more referred to now as Candace, and I like that much better. I love being Kirk's sister and we're great together, we both love each other, but you still want to have your own identity and not be in someone's shadow. 7. Still, Full House was a whole Cameron family affair in 1988 when Kirk had a cameo playing DJ, Stephanie and Michelle's cool older cousin Steve. There. Parents, Robert and Barbara, can be spied sitting on a bench when the Tanners play football in the park in that same episode. 8. Candace is actually the youngest of four, Kirk, 51, being the oldest, followed by sisters Bridget, 50, and Melissa, 47. Melissa started going on auditions as well when they were kids, but after one commercial she decided the biz wasn't for her. 9. Candace's Christian faith is central to her life now, but growing up, as she recalled in Balancing It All, her mom was the churchgoer and her dad wanted no part of that or any religious practice at all, though he was very concerned with morality. Sponsored links by Tabula. Lift Kun Bondi Pen the Rind Ni Pai 2565 Du Ta Luke Wan Ni.
Lith Bondi, Kania Kosna. 10. Like so many child stars, Candace had her first kiss on the job, when birthday girl DJ gets a kiss from her crush Kevin, played by Scott Curtis, in a Full House episode called 13 Candles that aired February 9, 1990. It's awkward and uncomfortable and you have millions of people looking at you, Candace. Acknowledged in The View in 2016, also having a blush-worthy moment remembering her poof of crimped hair. My parents were standing right off camera watching. It's awkward. I was nervous, I didn't know if I should keep my eyes opened or closed. Dot but my real, real first kiss was several years later and it was great. 11. Scott Weinger, who played DJ's boyfriend Steve on Full House, and eventual meant-to-be person on Fuller House, brought Candace to the premiere of Aladdin in 1992. He did all the title characters talking, if not the singing, in the Disney film, and she brought him to her real-life senior prom. Weinger posted the pic, bless him, for her 46th birthday. 12. Thanks to certified hockey fanatic Dave Uncle Joey Coulier, Candace met her first real boyfriend, future husband, Russian-born athlete Valery Burr, at a charity game held in Ontario, Canada, in October 1994 in the middle of an NHL lockout. Thank you at D. Coulier for taking me to my first hockey game. Thank you Lori for being my wingwoman and thank you at Bob Saget for watching out for me like a dad. Candace wrote on Instagram in honor of her 25th wedding anniversary, tagging her Full House co-stars in a pic from that momentous night. Saget commented on the post, when Val gave you his sweaty jersey after the game I knew it was a done deal. Love you. And Val. In fact, Val asked Candace out to lunch for the very next day. I was a big part of his introduction to America, or North America, I should say, she recalled with a smile on the Open Door Sisterhood podcast in 2020. Noting that her husband had only been in Canada for about two years when they first met, and he and his brother, NHL star Pavel Burr, learned English by watching Full House. They went on their date and the rest is history, she said. It's been a wild ride. Sponsored links by Taboola. Senior living homes in Siri Rat the cost may surprise you. SeniorHomesTieWeb.com 13. After Val and Cameron tied the knot on June 22, 1996, the groom sent their matchmaker a signed hockey stick reading, Dear Dave, thank you for Candace. 14. Candace battled depression and developed bulimia after she stepped away from acting. Often on her own in Montreal, where she moved as a newlywed when Val played for the Canadians, but was frequently on the road for away games, it was simply my way of coping with adjustment and fear after I left Hollywood and wasn't sure who I was anymore, she reflected in balancing it all. My life was unrecognizable, so I tried to find emotional comfort in food. 15. Candace became a mom at 22, basically the age when the hustle really begins for actresses, especially former child stars who want to successfully transition into adult roles. But while she has zero regrets whatsoever about pressing pause on her career to care for her children full-time, daughter Natasha was born. August.15, 1998, followed by Sons Lev on February 20, 2000, and Maxim on January 20, 2002. Candace has admitted that being labeled just a mom at the time touched a my heart would sink, making me feel as if caring for my children didn't amount to anything, she wrote in the foreword to Karen Emmons' 2015 book Hoodwinked. But that was a lie. 16. Candace was matron of honor at Jody Sweeten's first wedding, when she married Sean Olguin, in 2002 and Natasha was a flower girl. Sponsored links by Taboola. Don't dress yourself old. These 17 fashion items make you look older. Tip Mansion. 17. Slowed by injuries, Val retired from hockey in 2004. Once the kids were a bit older and their dad was on hand to stay with them, Candace went back to work, setting a fresh course for herself as the star of the 2008 Hallmark Channel holiday romance Moonlight. 18. Dave's wife Melissa Coulier shot the cover in a number of other photographs of Candace for her 2017 book Staying Stylish, one of the dozen-plus books inspirational guides and children's offerings she's written or co-authored. 19. 
When Fuller House premiered in 2016, Candace told Glamour.com that she wanted daughter Natasha to play her TV son Jackson's high school girl crush. It didn't happen quite that way, but Natasha did guest star on a 2020 episode, when DJ takes Jackson on a college tour. The 23-year-old is building her own acting resume, which includes several Hallmark Channel holiday movies with her mom, as well as the pivotal role of a teenage Aurora Tea Garden in flashback scenes in 2022's Haunted by Murder. Sponsored links by Tabula. Housekeeping employees needed in U.S. See salaries. Housekeeping jobs. Search ads. 20. Candace's one season as a permanent co-host on The View, knowing she'd been asked to fill the chair that was historically reserved for a more conservative voice, was memorable for the wrong reasons. The stress and the anxiety, I actually have a pit in my stomach right now, thinking about it, she recalled on the Behind the Table podcast in October 2021. And I have PTSD, like, I can feel it. It was so difficult, and to manage that emotional stress was so hard. She credited co-host Whoopi Goldberg with having her back, explaining, Whoopi came in a handful of times. I felt secure knowing she would protect me and not co-meet me if there was a difference of opinion. 21. Speaking of that chair, Candace penned the foreword to Elizabeth Hasselbeck's 2019 book Point of View, writing that she had faith she could do the job. Thanks to her friend's fearless 10-year run on the show that paved the way for future host a host combat. 22. Her skin thickened perhaps from taking a bit of crap on The View, Candace always comes prepared to clap back at online trolls, being one of the many celebs who can't post even a sweet family moment without attracting all sorts of rudeness amid the many likes. It's so strange to me that people have the audacity to write horrible and negative comments, she shared on E! S Daily Pop in January 2021. Like, you, would never say that to someone's face. In response to cracks about her family's holiday card, she had waded into the comments herself, replying, Wow I post a family photo and you all find everything you don't like about it or can make fun of. Do better than that, please. Candace explained to E. It was more about a reminder, like, I am sharing the best of what I believe my family is on a Christmas card, so keep your mouth. 23. They tried to dissuade their kids from playing hockey, Val knowing after 10 years in the NHL how much wear and tear it causes on the body. But Mox, who, knew from the time he was four that he wanted to play, insisted, and they relented when he was seven, Candace recalled in her book Balancing It All. And of course, Val, who had tried to encourage the boys to play tennis, agreed to coach them. 24. Candace and her husband started a direct-to-consumer winery that makes limited-edition batches, such as the 2012 Burr 13, named after the No. 13 Val wore during his hockey career. Val having been a longtime enophile, after his retirement from the NHL the couple partnered with Josh Peoples too found Burr Family Wines in St. Helena, Calif. Sponsored links by Tabula. Senior living apartments in Siri Rat shouldn't be this affordable. Take a look. Senior living residences near me, search ads. 25. For nearly a year now Candace and Val have been empty nesters, having celebrated Maxim's graduation from North Star Christian Academy and then seeing him off to college in August, though mom and dad only got as far as the airport. I had to just drop him off at LAX. And I am getting no sympathy from someone, Candace lamented on her Instagram story in a video made before she and Val were even home. Unmoved, her husband responded to the pointed dig, adding, that's what's wrong with America, raising soft kids. In a later update, Candace said, Mox did not call me when his flight landed. But I just called him, and he landed safe and sound, and we FaceTimed. And. Someone's picking him up from the airport, and he's sleeping on someone's couch. They grow up so fast. It's sad and heartbreaking at times, the mom of three reflected in 2020 on the Open Door Sisterhood podcast about two of her kids being out of the house. We don't talk about the letting go stuff as much as new baby excitement, dot but it's hard. She added, you've poured everything you have into these people and you just have to let them fly.